Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to deep dive into the 7070 uh, Morris by Flipsky. As requested by you, we will be opening them up, checking the battle hardening, checking the bearings, checking the sensors, checking the internal build of these, checking the quality, measuring stuff. I will compare them to some other motors that I've got, all that kind of good stuff. These, these are not new, new. I think it's been around since uh, May or something like that, but I've just got in my collection uh, and we're going to have a look at these beauties. So let's crack on with the video. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Pavel here again and today will be a detailed video about 7070 electrical motors by Flipsky. I've asked the question in few electrical skateboarding uh, groups, including the Skate Freedom, my group, what would you like to see in this video? So, we got few requests. I have agreed a discount for you guys as well to buy these motors. That's the code right here. If you want, you can use it. As you can see, I'm using a nine inch uh, rims and really aggressive uh, tramper mud plug tires on this test board. And it does require quite a bit of torque. At the moment, I got 63, 74, 140 kV, sorry, no, 170 kV motors on it. It's okay, but needs more torque. Hence why I turned to my friends at Flipsky and said, look, I need a bit more torque. So they've sent me these. These motors here can withstand voltages up to 18S, so 75 volt, from 6 to 18S. That's quite good. These are 110 kV. Flipsky are planning of coming out with different KV motors, but at the moment the only thing is available is 110, which is quite low, quite torquey, hence why you will be able to use 75 volts on it. These are rated 200 amp. Well, we'll find out soon when we're going to uh, run the detection of these motors uh, on 12S battery, we'll find out the amperage of these motors, so stay tuned. These are 4200 amp each. Well, I'm saying each, well, because I'm gonna use obviously two of them on my board. So we're obviously going to have a closer look at the motors, guys, but we got the uh, whole senses, of course, so for the EC to know the positioning of the motor, and for a smooth startup, some people did ask me, what the hell does this 6374, uh, 7070, whatever note means? Okay, very simple. When you talk about electrical motors or electrical skateboard motors in this instance, the numbers mean 6374, like this motor right here by Maytech, would mean 63 millimeter diameter, and 74 millimeter length of the can. In this instance of Flip Sky, 7070 means it is 70 millimeters diameter and it is 70 millimeters long. As simple as that. Another thing that you should remember if you are new to this hobby or new to electrical life skateboards or trike by the way you can use this motor for like a drift trike you can use this motor for electrical bicycle i've seen people using them quite successfully mostly these motors are used on electrical skateboards so another thing you need to remember guys when you're choosing the motor is something like the diameter of the motor shaft so this one here got 10 millimeters diameter of the shaft that means when you get the uh, pulley, that pulley needs to be 10 millimeters. Fortunately, new big gear drives can take either 8 millimeters or 10 millimeters. By the way, that's going to be an interesting video because I do have the 8 millimeter gear drive installed on my test board, and we're going to be converting that onto the 10 millimeter, which should be quite simple to be fair. I already got all the parts available, but that's for another video. So here we go. Now you know what the numbers mean. Another thing you need to be washing out for if you're choosing the motors is voltage that these motors can take and also the amps you can run these motors at. That's pretty much it. Well, KV value, 
KV value is a different story. If you want to have a look, I have a few videos on my channel about the KVs. Low body KV value, the torqueier, the more it will be. However, you'll get less rotations per uh, voltage. That means that the board will be slower on the speed, but much torqueier. Okay, so next part, let's bring some motors together and compare the 7070 by Flipsky to other sizes of the motors. In front of you right now, you've got 6374 and 7070. It's probably looking almost the same when you look in the butt of the uh, cans, but that's because it's got the chamfer design of the can. Now, let's put them side by side this way. As you can see, quite a bit of a difference right there. The lengths wise, they're almost there because one is 70, 70, one is 74. Another thing to remember guys is the motor fixing pattern. On the right or on your screen left, you got this 6374. They've got multiple fixings to it. Unfortunately, on the 7070, due to the size of it and size of magnets, you can only have the external pattern. And this is the pattern right here, so have a look. Most of the motor mounts should be able to take this pattern, no problem whatsoever, 4 millimeter screws. So I do really like the size 7070 because it's not too long but bulky enough to take all that copper on the windings to give you that torque. So let's compare this Flipsky 7070 to 63100 Flipsky. That's another motor that I actually quite like. There are some different uh, reviews on uh, in the community out there that the length of the motor affects the uh, actual stability of the can it does vibrate i have noticed that at high speeds but i'm talking about 38 40 42 miles per hour that's when i feel a bit of vibration on 63 100 so this is how 63 100 looks like compared to 70 70. So here we go guys, in front of you is my beautiful bullet build. If you don't know what she is, have a look on my channel. These motors right here are 63100. So they are 63 millimeters in diameter, 100 millimeters long. So this is how 7070 looks like compared to them lengthwise. Yeah, quite shorter, but much, much thicker. So this is the difference 63 100 70 70 benefit of having 70 70 is obviously you have much more uh, space to play with so if you have uh, shorter hangers this in the front of you is um, 3d service finality uh, drives and finality uh, hangers and they are 450 whopping nice 450 so it's nice and stable however you could be using some other hangers so if you're going for 70 70 you don't need this much space between the motors you don't need the hangers to be as long as these ones are i'm going to use these motors on matrix 2 uh, hangers and they should fit quite nicely with a space in between as well now let's compare the 6374 motors by Flipsky to 7070 motors by Flipsky. So these are the uh, 6374s already installed on my test board compared to the 7070 Flipsky motors. The lengths wise, well, pretty much the same, of course, because the 70 to 74. However, the diameter wise, 63 to 74. That looks much much beefier at the moment what you see in the front of you are the matrix 2 trucks as you can see you'll have no issue fitting that motor on those trucks but again we're going to find out because in the next video we're going to fit this on this board and we're going to take them for a ride and another comparison guys 70s by flip sky and the 6388s by Rich Motors.
hopefully this comparison gives you a bit of an idea between the uh, different sizes of the motors or most commonly used motors in electrical skateboarding and this is how you choose your motor different shaft different design of the shaft by the way that's another thing to remember that some of the shafts are round and they do rely on the keyway slot right there some shafts are d-shaped so they got a nice slot on the side of it right there and this is how you slot them into the um, a, a gear that goes on the motor so it doesn't spin around by the way guys <laughs> because i've been around the skateboards for a bit now all this is not new to me however if you are the beginner you just tuned into my channel and you want to know something that i may be missing in my videos please let me know in the comments below i can cover the subjects regardless how uh, uh, simple they are or how beginner level they are there's no problem whatsoever so let me know if you want to know anything further to this the quality itself is quite nice it's anodized uh, aluminium the shaft itself it does look good quality again the feel is quite nice the cables coming out of the motor they all come out nice and neat out of the body of the motor right there and they are all um, uh, shrink wrapped which is quite nice i can see they are using the dual skinned glue uh, type of uh, heat shrink so this is where you warm it up and the glue uh, uh, warms up and sticks to the braided cable protector you can see right here it's all tucked away for you already the face cables are 12 gauge silicone uh, high temperature uh, cables so as you can see quite flexible it is important because some motor manufacturers use in a bit of a cheaper quality and the sensor is nice and neat it comes in its own uh, sheath right here bear in mind there are five cables inside here if that would not be installed you would have had to protect it yourself but most manufacturers do this anyway so all in total just looking at the motor from quality uh, perspective externally it looks okay 7070 flip sky motors are fully sealed just to give you a bit of a uh, more understanding so these motors here are vented so you got this vents in the back for the air to come in and pull the hot air out of the can and this is what i mean by saying vented they got different designs some of them got them here some of them got it there depending tramper got like a mesh that goes over it 70s seventies are fully sealed so there is no way anything will get into the can unless it really squeezes through this tiny little gap right here at the front okay so let's have a closer look at the uh 70s so the cable uh, length uh, for the uh, face cables is 300 millimeters and the uh, motor sensor cable is another 100 mil so 400 millimeters they are already sealed and they are inside this uh, cable organizer sheath uh, whatever you want to call it not all the companies do that as you notice uh, for instance the Maytech they will just have the face cable separately uh, which is fine sometimes uh, the reaches the same way just separately so i do like dressing the motors up uh, in this organizer like that because it just makes them neater and uh, stops any well any uh, slight damage to the cables so you don't have to do any of it uh, it's already all done for you which is quite nice uh, standard uh, obviously plug for the uh, sensor cables and you got four millimeter uh, face connectors them spinny spinny ones i'm not the biggest fan of these i think i might be replacing those uh, for a solid ones or 5.5 millimeter again all depends if i'm going to run this motors on 12s this way i will need a bit more amps or might run them on 18s uh, then i might leave this uh, connector so it all depends uh, uh, on your build so now let's uh, have a look inside these motors guys and see if they are battle hardened so just to explain what battle hardening is uh, just in case if you didn't know so while i'm taking this apart i'm going to talk to you about it so battle hardening comes from actual uh, battle so the battle 
a robot. You know, that's a cool program. I do watch it sometimes. So from all the impacts and all the uh, hits they get, long, long time ago, someone said, you know what? I need to make my motors a little bit stronger. So they have added a bit more uh, resin or epoxy onto the uh, magnet so they don't fall out uh, at the impacts and also a bit more uh, or not more but actually uh, epoxy on the uh, coils as well so this is where that came from guys in order to uh, remove the can you need to take the split ring off it's quite simple when you have proper tools so split split ring is off and uh, one thing by the way i wanted to mention to you guys look really carefully inside these holes these are the holes that's going to be uh, used to hold your motor either into the gear drive or into the motor mount be careful because i'm not sure if you can see it or not but you can see the cables you see the cables right inside there so these are most likely the sensor cables and if you would use the screws that are way too long you will get all the way through into the can and you will damage the cable. So always uh, try to measure out the depth, correct depth of the bolts you will need. This way you stop any issues uh, further down the line. So after removing the split ring, the only thing that's holding this motor together is the actual power of the magnets. Be very careful when you do this and take them apart because yeah, the magnets are quite strong and they could slap on your finger and it will hurt, trust me. Best way is to fix it to the motor mount and then pull it, uh, pull it apart. I came up with this little contraption here. <laughs> I'm gonna use to uh, uh, take it apart and show you guys what's inside. There we go. So nice and careful. Uh, the motor is now apart so let's have a look what we got here inside okay guys so inside as you can see all the magnets are actually epoxied in quite nicely resin in uh, it is then uh, cleaned off which is quite nice so there are no spaces between the magnets which is good I do have another video when I opened up Matec motors. You can see a bit of a difference when you can still see the gaps between the magnets. Uh, all this blue stuff you see, this is for balancing of the can. Because obviously this can will be rotating at uh, quite high RPMs and you want it to be perfect. Otherwise it will start vibrating and shaking. So quite a bit of it went in there, which is good. So it's balanced. I always wondered what if that's going to fall off. But it feels like really... A strong epoxy uh, which is used for balancing so inside the can I got no issue uh, these are 10 millimeter axles by the way I think I mentioned that already so yeah there's no issue here quite cool that's it pretty much so yes these are battle hardened awesome so let's have a look at the starter this is the part that does not move now the length of the starter uh, let's have a look. We're at 70 70 motor. Uh, so the starter length is 37 millimeters. Yeah, by 37 mil. So that's your starter. There we go. Let me show you the position of the sensors. So this is the whole sensor right there. Another one right here. Another one right here here they are fixed in position quite nicely to be honest with you they are cut in into the magnet right there they're not protruding sealed in quite nicely so this is the uh whole sensor uh, board if you want to call it this way all the connections are also uh, resined in which is quite good and all the cables are tucked away in between right there okay so that is not that bad looks quite decent to be honest with you does look quite neat now i cannot see much of the battle hardening on the coils themselves but normally you don't do that anyway 
uh, well, unless you have like really exposed mortise, like what we've done for the reaches, for instance, right here, have a look. So that's like crazy, crazy level of battle hardening. Uh, yeah, the D services and myself, we've done that together. And uh, these are the richer mortars that yeah, I showed you previously. So look, that's crazy. Uh, anyway, so each strand is lacquered. Obviously, it must do uh, be lacquered. Otherwise, it will uh, not work and spark up. Uh, so there is no much battle hardening going on on these windings. Uh, but in general, as you can see, it's actually quite neat. Yeah, it's quite neat, guys. It's not bad at all. So, uh, the uh, shrink wrap for the face cables does go all the way inside the mortar, as you can see right there, which is good. Uh, and it's quite sealed. You can see a little bit of light, of light here. So some water might just get in between, but it's not a big deal. This mortar can actually run underwater. And those are the cables I was showing you. You see those cables right there? Right there. So these are the cables you can see through the hole, through the mounting hole. So you just got to be careful. I don't know why they cannot just make them a bit longer and kind of push them away uh, from the fixing holes. Don't know. Uh, looking at it, it doesn't seem like you would be able to damage the face cables if you use the... Oh, no, you would. Okay, so if you would use too long of a screws, you would damage the face cable. Or if you use too long of a screw on the other side here, you will damage the... Uh, uh, sensor cables so be careful not to use and i know repeating myself but don't use too long of a, of a bolt guys let's have a look what we got here um bearings wise okay so let's uh, gently tap these bearings out there's one there is another okay so there are two bearings all, all in total. You got one bearing at the front of the motor, that's where the shaft goes through. And you got another bearing at the back of the motor, and that's pretty much it. And you got the uh, obviously axle to go through it, and that's what it spins on. The bearings themselves. I think, I just don't want to make a mistake of putting a wrong bearing on the wrong side, but it looks like they are identical. Yes, they are identical. Yep. And uh, the bearings are 6900 and they are double sided, dust proof, shielded ball bearing 6900ZZ. Just to give you a bit of an idea on the size of them, these are 43.7 millimeters in diameter, external diameter, and they are 0.78 millimeters uh, thick. Let me show you them a bit up close. So as you can see, these uh, darker bit right there in between the two parts, that's the seal. They do feel quite nice, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, and they spin really nicely, smoothly. There's no wobble at them. Sometimes you get, you do get that. You'd be surprised what kind of bearings sometimes have been used on this. So yes, they're sealed on both sides. As you can see, that black uh, seal on this side and that side. So made in Thailand, MMB R three dash. 2210KK. Maybe for people who know their bearings, <laughs> this information will be useful. And uh, that's it, really. So let's put this back together. They do go in the water quite, uh, quite tight, which is nice. The tolerances are much better on some of the motors that I have uh, taken apart in my previous videos. Sometimes you just uh, pull it apart and the bearing yanks out, so that's not a good sign sometimes. I just got to be a bit more careful with this part here. Okay, 
so we're gonna put this together just in case if you guys want to see how it goes together be careful that's gonna slam okay so you got to be very careful when you put the motors together see Bosch if your finger would have been anywhere near it would have been caught in there one other part guys don't forget when you take the splintering apart there's another really thin tiny washer it's like a waffle washer yeah that needs to go back in otherwise you will hear this annoying uh, rattle of the split ring be careful otherwise you do you lose it and then you'll be complaining why your motor is making some sort of rattling noise that's one of the things that does that noise the split ring okay so now we're gently going to put it back together so the split ring is back together just in case if you are struggling to put the, oh, uh, the split ring on the bearing that is here at the front of the axle must go inside the casing you see that the space is deeper so you have to keep on pushing it in i just use the tiny tool like this and i was tapping it slightly all the way around until it sunk so you can see the cut on the axle this is where your split ring will sit in in order to make sure the o-ring sits in nicely just get something thin and you can spin uh, the split ring on the axle it will spin all the way around without actually falling off so you know that is now in its place so that's now back together beautiful so this is it for this video guys i think quite a detail a uh, detailed overview of the 7070 uh, flip sky motors uh, so far well uh, to be honest with you i'm quite happy with the uh, with what i see the quality of it so far so good cables the rest of it yeah the physical appearance it's quite nice there's nothing i can say one thing to mention i will be installing this motors uh, and i will do another quick video when actually installed i want to see how well they will um, uh, detect on the VESC tool i'm also going to try this motors on 12s uh, ride it for a while and then I'm gonna swap on the, onto the 18S battery and see what difference this will make for this motor so if someone is thinking about getting this motor not quite sure about the KV value or the battery to use I will cover that very shortly guys uh, one thing I was told today by Flipsky it will not be uh, making 140 or 170 KV motors in this size uh, available for now they I think testing 140s but they're not too happy with them so for now we're stuck with 110 but again if you use an 18s that's probably something you want to go for that's it really if you got any queries questions pin me a comment build safely right safely as i always say enjoy your life guys and i'll catch you in my next video bye